Howdy guys, welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy Part 65 So, I decided what I'm going to do for the next couple of episodes First, I'm going, well I'm going to complete, to go to the new garden dome up there Then, I will go talk with her To go to the Mario, uh, the Bowser Galaxy But first I'm going to the library, which I've forgotten. Thank you, 64 Master, for reminding me in your video. Let us begin. Yeah, let us begin. Yeah, nothing that much with the story told. Chapter 1 The Celestial Duo. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked to the star child. I'm Luma and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you. The little girl promised to Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still, the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed or something and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then, she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? And bad voices. The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship. And then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Chapter 2. Star Bits. Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam. Or jam, <laughs> said the little girl, above the rumble of her belly. Bef before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... I forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and the girl began to pout. Put. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out of a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find the turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits and gazed in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm, I bet there's water here too. 
The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued to search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4 The Dream One night, the girl dream dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother, retreating back. Without turning, a mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. Oh. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. Stupid girl. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. <laughs> star bits. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama! Oh mama! <laughs> The pair traveled through the starry skies and thought they encountered many other comets, not one of them helped Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now now Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, he felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go here and the library will go over there, the girl said busily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, Luma, well, she, she'd been bustling about at the feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it, it to make a home here. It turned out that Starbits weren't the only thing buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture, unlike any they had ever seen, and the girls used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate? It was certainly spacious, and still something seemed to be missing. Just like the starship where we are on. If only my father, brother, and mother were here. The girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in a sp starship. Chapter 6 France Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma pairs it back. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, uh, frantically blah, 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 and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she could not help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. There were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she will begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Another one? Oh, chapter 7, the telescope. After seeing their 100 comets, a sudden thought... Oh, yeah. 
That's why she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange, it's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out the grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. And I will continue on in the next episode. So no worries.